Welcome to this video in which we will examine the properties of evenness and oddness for discrete time signals. And we'll do this by going through seven different uh, examples and hopefully uh, by the time we're done uh, you'll understand the concept. Uh, up here on the right I've uh, shown the mathematical definition of even and odd and our goal for this video is to go through each of the signals that we have listed in yellow and for each of the signals determine if it's even or if it's odd or if it's neither. Signals cannot, or there are signals that are neither even nor odd. And for those signals that are neither, what we'd like to do is find their even and their odd components. And when we get to one that uh, is neither even nor odd, we'll show you exactly what we mean by that. So let's begin. Let's start with the um, delta function. Okay, so I've drawn a signal here that's a delta function. And the question is, is this even or if it, or is it odd or is it neither? And uh, again, for it to be even, I need to have x of n is equal to x of negative n. Well, x of 0 is always equal to x of 0, so that one works. x of 1 is 0. Is this equal to x of negative 1? Why, yes. And uh, x of 2 is 0, x of negative 2 is 0. So I could keep going, but it's clear that um, the delta function does satisfy this property, so the delta function is even. Okay, now I can also look at a graph of a function and determine quite easily whether it's even or odd. An even function is symmetric about the zeroth sample. Okay, and so if I look at uh, my graph here, it's 1 when n is equal to 0, and it's 0 everywhere else. Um, so symmetry means that I could actually flip this about the, the point n is equal to 0, and it would look the same. And you can see, if I draw some sort of imaginary line here, which passes through 0, and then take everything on the right side, everything over here, and flip it over here, and everything on the left side, and flip it over here, you can see that I would have the same signal. So the delta function is even. Okay, let's go on and look at the next one, which is the unit step function. And the unit step function is um, 0 for values of n less than 0, and 1 for values of n greater than or equal to 0. So if I look at this, uh, in order for it to be even, uh, x of n has to be equal to x of negative n. So if I look at x of 0, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, x of 0 is equal to x of 0. If I look at x of 1, this is not equal to x of negative 1. So I know immediately that this is not even. For it to be odd, I need to have x of n is equal to negative x of negative n. Okay, well, so if I look at x of 0, okay, x of 0 is 1, and if I take x of negative 0, which is still negative 0, um, x of negative 0 is still 1. So this does not work. So we can also say that this signal is not odd. Okay, so what we'll do now then is we'll actually show how to uh, find the even and the odd components of this signal. And the even and the odd components are such that if I uh, have a signal that has an even component and it has an odd component, these are script E and script O, then the sum of the even and odd component is equal to x of n. Uh, I can find the even component by taking one half of xn plus x of minus n. Okay, and we'll talk in just a minute about what this means when we're actually doing it. I can find the odd component by one half of xn plus 
uh, actually I guess we want to say minus here, minus x of minus n. Okay, well, let's see how this works for this particular case. Um, to get the even component, I need to take x of n, which is what I have here, and I need to add to it x of minus n. So let's see what's a good color. We'll do x of minus n, this guy here, in green. And again, x of minus n is uh, taking the signal and flipping it about the point n is equal to 0. So if I start with 0, I have x of minus 0 is 0. So I'll draw alongside of my original x of n what x of minus n is. Uh, x of minus, uh, this x of minus 1 is going to be 0, and so on out like this. Uh, x of 1, uh, let's see, so when n is equal to, I'm sorry, I haven't been very clear here. When n is equal to 1, x of minus 1 is 0. That's why I have this guy here. When n is equal to 2, x of minus 2 is 0. That's why I have this guy here, and so on. Now when n is equal to negative 1, x of negative negative 1 is x of 1, which is 1. So this guy here is going to be x, or it's going to be 1, and so on. So these spindly green things that I'm drawing, these represent x of negative n. Okay. And now what I need to do, and this will go on out like this forever. Now what I need to do is add these guys all together. And so you can see when I add the red guys and the green guys here, it looks like the holiday season, right? That's a bad joke. So I go uh, minus at minus 3, I'll have a value of 1, because the red guy is 0 and the green guy is 1. Minus 2, I'll have a value of 1. Minus 1, I'll have a value of 1. At 0, I'll have a value of 2. And then at 1, I'll have a value of 1. 2, I'll have a value of 1, and so on. And this goes on like this to negative infinity, and this goes on to positive infinity. So this is x of n plus x of minus n. Okay, and now all I need to do is multiply this by a half, and that gives me the even component of um, x of n. So if I multiply this by a half, then these things that were at a value of 1 become a, or become a half of that, which is 1 half, and this becomes a value of 1. So this graph that we have here is now x of even or I'm sorry, x sub e. It's the even component of x. And uh, you can see that it is indeed even. If I look at this point, n is equal to 0, uh, this x sub e n is, uh, uh, what's the proper word, symmetric about this point. And uh, you can see that this actually does indeed now satisfy the requirements for an even function. Okay, let's see what happens to find when we try to find the odd component. Here we've got to subtract x of minus n. So um, I guess we can just go ahead and write this down. We'll start at 0. When n is 0, I have x of n, which is this red guy, which is 1, minus x of minus n, which is the green guy. So I have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So at n equals 0, the odd component is 0. At n is equal to 1, I have x of 1, which is 1, minus x of minus 1. And x of minus 1 is 0, so that will be 1 minus 0, which is 1. And then I multiply by this half, so I'll have 1 half. And you can see as I go out here, hopefully, that it's going to look like this um, 
for the rest of infinity. Now I get to this side, um, x, so I'm looking now at n is equal to negative 1, uh, x of negative 1 is 0, minus x of negative negative 1, which is 1. So that's going to be 0 minus 1, and I multiply that by a half, so I actually have something that looks like this. So this will be minus 1. And if I keep going, I'll discover that the whole thing looks like this. Okay, minus 2, minus 3, and these all have a magnitude of minus 1 half. Okay, so this is x of o, or x sub o, the odd component of x. And you can see that this one also has a symmetry about the point n is equal to 0, in the sense that um, this guy is the same as this guy, except the sign is changed. This guy is the same as this guy, except the sign is changed. And so this is indeed an odd uh, signal because x of n is equal to minus x of minus n. Okay, so what we've done here is we've taken the unit step function and we've broken it into, well, we discovered it was not even and it was not odd. So we've uh, decomposed it, that's the way you typically talk about this, into its even and its odd component. Now you may ask, why on earth do we want to do this at all? Well, it turns out that even and odd signals each have particular properties that are very useful when you're, for example, doing Fourier transform analysis. Uh, the Fourier transform of an even signal will be real. The Fourier transform of an odd signal will be imaginary. Uh, there's all sorts of symmetry things that go on in a Fourier transform, which include even and oddness. So it's really very, very handy. So unfortunately, I'm out of time. So in part two of this video, we'll go through the rest of these signals, determine whether they're even or odd. And for those that are neither even or odd, we'll come up with a decomposition into an even part and an odd part. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.